A young priestess is seen talking to the guild attendant. She informs the attendant that she would like to become an adventurer, and the attendant gives her a tag which denotes that she's a porcelain rank, which is the lowest rank for a beginner. Right at that moment, a group of rookies walk over to the priestess and the attendant, and they ask her to join their party. They inform her that they plan on taking up a quest to kill goblins, and the attendant subjects that they take up another quest that's fitting for beginners, but they refuse as a young boy who happens to be a swordsman and their leader tells her that he has chased off some goblins that appeared in his village, and it will be easy work for high pay. He further informs her that one of the members of his party is a swordswoman while the other is a sage, and they'll do perfectly fine on their own. The girls ask the priestess if she's willing to join their party or not in impatience and the priestess finally agrees, but as they turn to leave, the guild attendant stares at them in worry. The kids head straight for Goblin's Cave and a young boy who appears to be the leader informs the young priestess that they couldn't purchase any potions or weapons because they didn't have enough money to procure one. The young priestess gets scared about this and asks if they were not overstepping their boundaries, but the other three laugh at her while implying that she's a fraidy cat. Right at that moment, some goblins attack their party and the sage uses a spell to engulf one in flames, but she is pinned down by the other goblins who try to have their way with her. The young priestess rushes to her defense and sends some scurrying with her holy staff, while the boy charges at them fearlessly. He swings his sword dangerously, but the goblins soon prove to be too much for him. The boy launches an attack on one of the goblins, but the goblin pushes a knife through his midsection. The swordswoman realizes that the battle is almost lost and attempts to protect the other two females by asking them to run away, but she is soon overpowered by the goblins who assault her sexually while beating her. The young priestess breaks down in tears and apologizes to the swordswoman repeatedly before running off at the sage, but they're unable to make it too far before the goblins catch up to them. The priestess is attacked with an arrow and numerous goblins make their way with the sage before staring at the priestess with nothing but sheer lust. But just when all hope seemed lost for the young priestess, a shadow emerges from the darker side of the cave and gets the savage goblins off her. He introduces himself to her as the goblin slayer and Sue discovers that she's a young adventurer. He dismembers the goblins with a few slashes of his knife before turning to the young sage who was not just bleeding from all the assaults but had also been poisoned. The sage begs him to kill her but the young priestess begs him to save her. She reveals that she can heal her with one of her three miracles, which was a special gift that priestesses have, but the goblin slayer informs her that it's too late before killing the sage. Afterward, the goblin slayer runs toward the edge of the cage with the priestess and instructs her to use light magic to blind the leader of the goblins who is hanging toward them at that moment. The goblin lord falls due to the sudden impact of the light, and the goblin slayer slays him before lighting him up and sending him toward the oncoming goblins. They venture toward the other side of the cave where they discover a goblin who is trying to force himself on the swordswoman. The goblin slayer kills it before going on to kill the baby goblins the priestess delay. Later on, the priestess discovers that it's a common occurrence for rookie adventurers to go goblin slaying but never return and the few females who managed to escape were so emotionally distraught that they lived alone in temples for the rest of their lives. But the young priestess was not dismayed and she determined in her heart to follow the goblin slayer to the end. Later on, the young priestess bought some armor to protect her during future adventures before approaching the goblin slayer. She reveals that she has purchased a chain mail and tells him of her intent to follow him on his future adventures. Later on, a farm girl is seen having a dream where she tells a young boy that she's going to the city. We soon discover that the young boy is the younger version of the goblin slayer. In the dream, the farm girl asks him if she should purchase something for him in the city, but the boy flares up and tells her not to get him anything. The boy's elder sister arrives and settles their quarrel before telling them that friends shouldn't fight. After a while, a carriage arrives and the girl leaves for the city while staring wistfully at the goblin slayer. She wakes up in a start and mourns over the fact that she had never apologized for leaving him behind. The farm girl dresses up and walks over to the way down where she sees the goblin slayer doing his routine checks around the perimeter. He studies the ground for signs of goblin's footprints and checks if the fence had been tampered and he's satisfied to discover that nothing is amiss. The girl chides him for this and tells him that he didn't have to do this. She also informs him that her uncle is awake and asks if she should prepare breakfast for him, and he agrees to this. Later on, the goblin slayer is seen sharing breakfast with the farm girl and her uncle. He makes the payment for his monthly rent, and the uncle comments on the fact that he was paying way much more money than expected. However, a goblin slayer involves him in that he had received more quests asking him to slay goblins. The goblin slayer informs him that he'll be returning to the guild in search of new quests and the farm girl offers to escort him because she plans on selling some farm produce at the market as well. But her uncle stares at the goblin slayer disapprovingly as they leave for the guild. After they arrive at the guild, the farm girl hears people calling the goblin slayer a weirdo because he only takes up quests to kill goblins despite being a silver-ranked adventurer. The farm girl stares at him worriedly and waits patiently for him while he walks off in search of a quest, but she is surprised when he is joined by a young priestess. 
She realizes that the priestess is probably the person he had recently started adventuring with whom he had only recently told her about. The Goblin Slayer takes up three new quests to kill goblins and the young priestess offers to escort him. The Goblin Slayer walks up to the farm girl and informs her that he has some new quests. He also tells her that he won't be back for days, but she waits patiently for him. Her uncle notices this and tells her that the Goblin Slayer has gone crazy since a disastrous event many years ago, and she was better off forgetting about him because his thirst for killing goblins would only end up killing him. But the farm girl assures her uncle that he'll always come back and she also informs him that she'll wait for him no matter what. Meanwhile, the Goblin Slayer hunts down some goblins while shooting fiery arrows into their hideout. He lights up their hideout with gasoline and arrows and instructs the priestess to trap them inside with her magical abilities. The priestess traps them inside but eventually tears up at the sight of the goblin's agony. She wonders why anyone could be so ruthless to these creatures and begs the heavens to send a downpour of rain. However, the goblin slayer proceeds to kill the rest of the goblins with his sword. The priestess asks why he uses such harsh methods as fire, poison, and detonation to kill the goblins, and the goblin slayer silently recalls how goblins had attacked his village when he was a little kid, and how they had raped and killed his sister while he watched fearfully from the confines of a wardrobe. After they complete their mission, they leave for the guild and the guild attendant leaps to her feet at the sight of the goblin slayer as she is happy to see that he is safe. Later on, the goblin slayer returns home and the farm girl is also excited to see that he is unhurt. She asks him if she should prepare a meal for him and he agrees to this. Later on, the high elf is seen strolling through the halls of the guild and she grabs the attention of the adventurers who wonder what she's doing at the guild. She walks toward the guild attendant and tells her that she's searching for an adventurer named Orpold, but the guild attendant tells her she knows no one of that name. A dwarf steps forward and reprimands the elf for calling the person they were looking for by his elven name. He tells the guild attendant that the person they're looking for is a fellow named Beard Cutter, but the guild attendant tells him that she doesn't know anyone by that name. A lizard man steps forward and apologizes on behalf of his companions, the elven girl and the dwarf, before revealing that what they meant to say was that they're looking for the goblin slayer. The goblin slayer steps into the guild at that moment and asks if someone mentioned something about goblins, and the guild attendant informs the trio that the goblin slayer is the one they were looking for. She muses to herself that the trio is a strange party since the elves and the dwarves were ancestral enemies and lizard men are a rare species. The young priestess arrives in time to hear the odd party asking for a meeting with the goblin slayer, and she attempts to follow him but he advises her against it. The goblin slayer heads into a meeting room with the odd party and a group of new adventurers approach the priestess and advise her to stop working with the goblin slayer but she refuses. A sorceress walks up to the priestess and tells her of how the goblin slayer had approached her with an odd request. She further reveals that the request had involved her procuring an ancient scroll and asks why the priestess isn't joining a party where she could use her powers for killing monsters more significant than goblins. Meanwhile, the odd party tells the goblin slayer of how they'd like his help with defeating the demon lord's army, but the goblin slayer tells him that he doesn't know the demon lord and he has no desire to kill anything other than goblins. The elven girl flares up at this, but the lizard man chips in before things get complicated. He tells the goblin slayer that the major reason why they had sought him out in the first place is because they need his help with killing a nest of goblins that were attacking the elven village. He further revealed that the goblins had already captured the sister of the person who sent them and the adventurer who had gone in search of her had now gone missing. The odd party further reveals that they're also silver-ranked adventurers and they had been instructed to aid him. The goblin slayer informs them of his decision to take up their quest and the elven girl is surprised at how eager he is to take up the quest. He leaves the trio in the room and informs the guild attendant of his new quest. The young priestess hears of this and offers to follow him but she is joined by the odd party who reveal that they'll also be accompanying them. They travel for a while before camping at night and the elven girl shares her traveling rations with them. The dwarf also shares his fire wine with them and the elven girl gets red in the face after eating it but they're all surprised when it doesn't affect the goblin slayer. The elven girl urges him to share something of his with them and the goblin slayer shares some cheese that had been given to him by the farm girl at home. He also tells them how his elder sister had told him that goblins come from the moon. He further reveals that when someone goes green with envy or tries to take others' things by force, they become goblins. The next day, the group leaves for the goblins' hideout and they spot some goblins waiting by a cave, but the elven girl takes out two goblins with an arrow. After they succeed in taking out the other goblin scouts, they venture into the cave and they encounter a device which looks like an advanced technology. The goblin slayer notices this and tells the others that this horde of goblins has no shaman because a shaman would not make use of such advanced weapons and the presence of this technology indicates that they're being led by an intelligent being. They survey the cave for any signs of the goblins' hideout and the dwarf detects that the goblins are located at the left side of the cave, but the goblin slayer insists that they take the other side. After they follow the right side, they venture into a room where they see the missing elven lady who had been bound against the wall. She tells the goblin slayer to kill and he charges toward her, while the others try to restrain him but a goblin emerges behind her legs and he kills it with one blow. 
The others are relieved as they thought that he intended to kill the girl, but he tells them that he's not a savage and he had only been trying to kill the goblin. The lizardman uses his spell to summon Iguanadur, a lizardman made from the bones of his elders, and he orders it to take the missing girl back to the elven village. After Iguanadur leaves, the lizardman reveals that he can only use his powers once more, and the young priestess reveals that she also has a limited number of time that she can use her powers. They venture deeper into the cave in search of the goblins, and they eventually find them sleeping in a group. The goblins are awakened by their presence, but the dwarf casts a sleeping spell on them to prevent them from alerting their leader. After the goblins fall asleep, the goblin slayer and the odd party kill them in their sleep and the elven girl stabs them repeatedly as she remembers how the poor girl had been raped. While they kill the goblins, the leader catches them in the act and the goblin slayer is surprised to see the strange creature. The elven girl informs him that it's an orc which happened to be one of these in Lord's generals, but the orc is angered by the goblin slayer's ignorance of his species and he charges at them with contempt. The lizardman summons Iguanador again and he charges at the orc, but the orc fends off the lizardman's attacks and the attacks of his other companions. The orc demonstrates his true power by shooting at them with a gigantic fireball, but the priestess protects them with the divine power of protection. After their shield wears off, the group launches an attack on the orc, but the orc sends the goblin slayer flying before thwacking the rest of the group. The priestess runs over to the goblin slayer's side and gives him a healing potion and a stamina potion. After the demon slayer regains his strength, he tells the others of a new plan that had just come to his mind, and he charges at the orc who tries killing him with another fireball, but the goblin slayer reveals an ancient scroll that he had hidden carefully and uses the ancient spell within it to slice the orc in two halves. The others are surprised as he walks over to the orc and finishes it off with a deep cut in the forehead. The priestess realizes that it was probably the same scroll that the sorceress at the guild had told her about. After they kill the rest of the goblins, the party leaves the cave and meet a carriage waiting for them outside. An elven man asks how many more goblins are inside, but the crew walk past him wordlessly. After they step into the carriage, the males fall asleep and the elven girl asks the young priestess if the goblin slayer had been killing so many goblins alone in the past and the priestess confirms this. The elven girl is touched by this, but she promises herself that she would introduce the goblin slayer to a proper adventure in the future before falling asleep. Later on, the goblin slayer is seen inspecting the fence of the farmhouse for any signs of goblins when the farm girl walks up to him. She asks if everything is okay, and the goblin slayer informs her that there was no signs of goblins. She tells him that she had been asking about his health condition and asks him if the new group of adventurers whom he had traveled with recently, but she is pleasantly surprised when he implies that he could like to work with them again. After a while, the goblin slayer leaves for the guild and he is approached by the lizard man, the dwarf, and the elven girl who tells him that the lizard man had been craving for cheese. After the goblin slayer gives them some cheese, the elven girl waits behind and asks the goblin slayer if he would like to join them in their upcoming adventures and she is excited when he tells them that he'll think about it. Later on, some rookie adventurers are seen going on a quest to kill unusually large mice. They succeed in killing them but the boy loses his sword as they flee from giant cockroaches who rush to the spot to eat the remains of the rat. The boy tries getting a sword or another weapon from other adventurers in a bid to get his weapon, but he is unable to find someone who can lend him. The boy walks up to the goblin slayer and asks for his advice and the goblin slayer advises him to use a club because it was just as effective as a sword. The adventurers return to the cave in search of the sword and they succeed in killing two other rats with a club, but Tyre are chased by a group of roaches. The boy realizes that his sword is within the largest roach and he finally manages to defeat it and retrieve his sword. Meanwhile, the goblin slays are seen supervising the promotion exam for rookies. One of the rookies is demoted because he stole treasure for himself, but he takes it wrongly and attempts to kill the guild attendant. However, the goblin slayer rises to her rescue and puts the rookie in his shoes before chasing him off. After the promotion exam ends, the goblin slayer walks out while the guild attendant's friend teases her about having an obvious crush for the goblin slayer. Not too long after, a message arrives for the goblin slayer and the guild attendant is surprised to see that the sword maiden who happened to be archbishop had sent a message asking for the goblin slayer. Later on, the demon lord is seen talking to a lady who appears to be his captive when a hero arrives with two other members of her party. She launches an attack on him and succeeds in killing him and the next day, the news of her deeds spread through the guild like wildfire. People celebrate the news of the death of the demon lord the following day, but the goblin slayer remains unmoved by the jubilations and simply informs the priestess and the odd party that he had just received a quest to kill some goblins. He asks them if they're interested in joining him and they all agree to do this, but the elven girl and the priestess force him into making a promise that he'll never use explosives or fire or poison to kill the goblins. The party leaves for the capital and the priestess and the odd party are surprised to discover that their client is the sword maiden, the archbishop of the capital and one of the top-ranked adventurers who had succeeded in killing the demon lord before his reincarnation. We soon discover that she had become a legend among the people and the priestess is shy to meet her. When they finally arrive at the temple, the swords maiden greets them warmly and she tells them of how the dead body of young girls and women were being found in the streets. 
she reveals that one of the city scouts had seen a dark figure attacking a little girl and had killed it only to discover that it was a goblin. She then asks for their help in killing the threats and assures them that she'll provide each of them with a bag of gold after they succeed in doing this quest. She tells them that the goblins are located within the canals under the temple and gives them an old map of the canal. The goblin slayer and his party venture into the can and they run into a group of goblins. They initially launch an attack on them. However, the number of the goblins keep increasing and the goblin slayer instructs the priestess to engulf them in a magical cage after he throws a can of pepper spray at them. The priestess admonishes him for this as the goblins cry in pain, but the demon slayer says nothing. The elven girl hears the sound of flowing water and they decide to investigate the noise, but on getting there, they run into an army of goblins. They run in the opposite direction, but they encounter an alligator. The goblin slayer suggests that they run in the direction of the goblins and he pulls them away from sight, after exposing the goblins to the ravenous alligator. He then asks the priestess to shine light on the stream and she does this. The alligator takes advantage of the light and gobbles up the green little goblins without letting a single one escape. As they walk toward the entrance of the canal, the goblin slayer remarks on how he was incredibly sure that these goblins were produced unnaturally, because they had used boats despite being cowards who would have never used boats on the drainage canal if they knew of the alligator. He further reveals that although their search was cut short by the alligator, something intelligent had definitely mobilized the goblins and he planned on returning to the canals to kill it. After they left the canal, the priestess asked the others if they would like to join her in taking a bath, but they while giving her the excuse that they're not too fond of baths, but the goblin slayer reveals that he has an errand to run. While the priestess enjoys a bath in the temple, she is surprised when the sword's maiden joins her. The sword's maiden warns her that their party might not last forever and the goblin slayer might be killed in one of his quests for goblins and the priestess worries about him. She asks if there's anything she can do to prevent this, but she realizes that even if death doesn't stop him, he'll eventually get to a point where he can't hunt down goblins anymore. However, this makes her from develop second thoughts for this quest. She notices a scar on the priestess's back and realizes that Swords Maiden knows what it's like to be captured by a goblin. The next day, they leave for the hideout as the Swords Maiden stares at them hesitantly. They decide to investigate the hideout, but they're surprised to see that the canal is silent. As they walk further into the canal, they noticed a room that was unlocked and decided to inspect it, but they're surprised when they're locked within the room. Poison gas seeps into the room and they realize that they've been trapped, but the Goblin Slayer instructs his companions to cover their nose to prevent themselves from being poisoned. After the poisonous gas had subsided, the goblins rush into the room while some shoot at them, but the priestess protects them with her magical shield. Unfortunately, the shield wears off eventually and the goblins overpower the goblin slayer and his companions. The goblins part way for their lord who flings the goblin slayer against the wall before turning his attention to the odd party. The elven girl is pinned against the floor while the goblins toy with her, and the goblin lord picks her up and bites her arm. The goblin slayer notices this through half-closed lids and a bloody head and he recalls how helpless he had felt after his sister died. He suddenly rises to his feet and launches an attack on the goblin lord from behind before stabbing him in the eyes. The goblin lord holds his eyes in pain before stumbling to his feet. The goblins are stunned at the fact that their lord had been brought down by a human and they lose their balance for a minute. The odd party take advantage of this moment and turn the tides in their favor, and the remaining goblins scurry away in fear for their lives after seeing that their boss has been defeated. The goblin slayer walks over to the priestess to ascertain if she's doing okay and after confirming that she's alright, he suddenly crashes in a heap beside her but the odd party, who were now exhausted and battered from the battle, also join them. Later on, the goblin slayer wakes up naked and sees the priestess, sleeping naked beside him. He realizes that he had been brought back to life using the magical power of resurrection that involved him sleeping naked with a virgin. The sword's maiden enters the room at that moment and tells the goblin slayer how she had been raked by goblins ten years ago. She further reveals that others would probably make fun of her if they discovered that the archbishop and the sword's maiden who people had sang praises of was scared of ordinary goblins. She asks the goblin slayer if she can trust him to help her and she leaves right before the priestess wakes up. The priestess is stunned and embarrassed to see that the goblin slayer had woken up before her and she asks if he had seen anything, but it doesn't calm her jitters when he reveals that she had no scars. After they had finished dressing up, the odd party barges into the room and the elven girl tells the goblin slayer how the priestess had cried after he didn't wake up the previous day. The dwarf and the lizardman further reveal that they had not eaten a thing since the incidents as they had been waiting for him, just so they could share their first meal together. After they finish eating, the goblin slayer and the priestess leave for the blacksmith where they drop off their armor for repairs. The next day, the goblin slayer, the priestess, and the odd party leave for the canal to kill the remainder of the goblins, but they discover a large eye that can shoot fire and nullify spells. The goblin slayer instructs the dwarf to put it to sleep and trap it inside after he throws a bag of gas at it. 
The eyes catch fire and it dies alongside the goblins within the room. After they walk deeper into the room, they realize that the eyeball has been protecting a mirror, but they're unable to see their reflections, so the goblin slayer instructs the priestess to use her powers on it. After the priestess uses her powers on the mirror, they see the shapes of goblins on the other side of the mirror who are busy preparing their boats to come to the canal. The goblin slayer realizes that the goblins were probably using this mirror for some elaborate scheme, but he also realizes that if the mirror was being used by the goblins, they were definitely still within the canal. Just then, a horde of goblins rush toward them and they're joined by the goblin lord who attacks the goblin slayer with pent-up anger from their previous match. The goblin slayer discovers that the mirror can absorb all objects so he instructs lizardmen to dislodge it and carry it alongside the dwarf. He vexes the goblin lord and urges him in the direction of the mirror before allowing it to crash land on it. The priestess and the dwarf combine their forces and succeed in killing all the goblins in the room while using the mirror as a diversion. After they're done, the goblin slayer asks the dwarf to coat the mirror in concrete and sink it in a river to prevent others from using the mirror for evil quests. He later returns to the swords maiden and tells her of his suspicions that she's somehow involved in all the crimes that had been occurring in the city. The swords maiden admits that goblins could never kill their prey instantly, and they prefer to them to their hideout and toy with them for a little while before killing them. She reveals that she had taken up the role of a goblin to make the villagers understand how horrible it was to be raped by goblins. She asks the goblin slayer what he plans to do with her, but it tells her that he plans on doing nothing to her because he understood that she was in pain. He tells her that he'll help her kill goblins whenever she needs and he'll come running even if the goblins appear in her dreams. Later on, Goblin Slayer returns to the guild with his friends and he tells them of his plan to make ice treats, a dessert that he had not tasted since his sister died. The Goblin Slayer steps into the kitchen and sees the farm girl cooking. She asks him if he cares for breakfast and he agrees to this. He reminisces on how his childhood friend had told him that she was going to the city and how he had flared up out of envy. After she left, his sister had asked him if it was because he felt envious of his friend that he had gotten angry. He also recalls how his sister had asked him to stop feeling envious of others because people who felt envious of others were like goblins. She asked him to apologize to his friend when she returned and he recalls how his sister had cooked his favorite dish of chicken soup and milk while he had greedily consumed bowl after bowl. The next day, the goblin slayer wakes up and steps out to do his usual routine check, and the farm girl calls out to him as she's stunned to aid him walking about without his helmet. She invites him to join her and her uncle for breakfast, and the goblin slayer agrees to her invite and joins them for breakfast before stepping inside. However, her father shares the same reaction that she did after realizing that the goblin slayer has taken off his helmet. He wonders if the goblin slayer had finally given up on goblin slaying and asks if he's still planning on visiting the guild even though the demon lord was dead, but the goblin slayer tells him that goblins were still running about freely. He asks if he had seen anything unusual, and the goblin slayer tells him that he had not noticed anything unusual. Before the goblin slayer leaves for the guild, a farm burl offers to follow him. While the goblin slayer loads a few supplies into the carriage, the farm burl's uncle approaches him and asks him to be careful with his niece. Upon their arrival at the guide, the farm girl leaves the goblin slayer to get some errands done, but people fail to recognize the goblin slayer and some adventurers even treat him nicely or unaware of who he is. The goblin slayer makes a stop for the blacksmith's shop before picking up his armor. He notices an adventurer training a group of rookies and he steps into the guild where he meets the young priestess who tells him that her arm had now fully recovered. They are joined by the guild assistant who tells him that he has a letter from the swords maiden, but the young priestess wonders why the swords maiden had written to him. The goblin slayer eventually discovers that the swords maiden had written to tell him that her nightmares about goblins had finally stopped and things were going pretty smoothly in the capital. The odd party walked toward them at that moment and asked why the goblin slayer had not stopped by to see them if he was in the area and they try convincing him to eat with them. But the goblin slayer refuses while saying he's got some business. The farm girl walks in at that moment and the group is surprised to see her. The elven girl is disappointed to find out that the goblin slayer had plans with the farm girl and that was why he had initially refused her invitation. The group extends an invite to the farm girl and she joins them on their table. Later that evening, the dwarf and the elven girl indulge in a drinking bag to see who would get drunk first, and the audience at the guild cheers them on as they drink deeper into the night. Later on, the farm girl is seen preparing breakfast in a joyous mood when the goblin slayer suddenly walks up to her and tells her to run away as fast as possibly. The farm girl is stunned by this, and she asks why Huaz was asking her to leave, but the goblin slayer reveals that he had seen goblin footprints in the wood, and judging by the number of footprints on the forest grounds, the number of goblin scouts were probably running into hundreds, and it was probably the army of the Goblin King. He also reveals that they probably had a shaman and numerous lords, and he could not handle them on his own, but the farm girl refuses to leave. The farm girl tells him that she trusts him and she wouldn't leave because she knew he would stay behind. The Goblin Slayer tries warning her off it by telling her the gory details of what had happened to the previous women who had been captured by the goblins, but the farm girl insists on staying behind and stares at him wistfully before reaching for his face. 
but the goblin slayer stops her and heads out. The Farnborough's uncle notices the saddened state of his niece and tells the goblin slayer not to make his niece sad. The goblin slayer walks toward the guild and announces that he has a favored ask. People are stunned by this as the goblin slayer rarely ever fights alongside others. The goblin slayer tells them an army of goblins are planning on attacking a forest at the outskirts of the village where he was currently living and he would need their help to defeat them. The adventurers initially refuse to help him and the elven girl jumps to her feet in anger, but she holds herself back from having an outburst. One of the adventurers demands for a form of payment and Ye Goblin Slayer promises the adventurers that he'll give them whatever they want even going so far as to list his personal belongings. The adventurers offer to kill the goblins for him, but they tell him that he'll buy them a drink as payment. The guild attendant realizes that the Goblin Slayer is in need of help so she offers a gold coin to anyone who kills goblins. The adventurers are fueled by the prospects of extra money and they prepare for the night's battle with renewed vigor. Them and later that night, they lay hidden and wait for the goblins. The Goblin King sends a signal to the goblins and asks them to leave for the farmhouse and the goblins run towards the house gleefully, but they're attacked by a wall of spears and a torrent of arrows. The adventurers kill the offensive green beings mercilessly, but some of the goblins realize that they had been ambushed, and they try to escape but a group of rookie adventurers notice them and kill them. After they had finished killing all the young goblins, a female adventurer remarks on how the goblin slayer truly deserved his silver ranking because he had come up with a battle strategy that had made it easier for them to kill the goblins. Another adventurer is seen striking down a goblin in the forest when a goblin lord suddenly appears behind him and twists him repeatedly before flinging him in the direction of the other adventurers. The other adventurers are alarmed by this as they also hear the heavy footsteps of numerous goblin lords. The goblin lords emerge from behind the forest trees and one of the rookie adventurers asks for the goblin slayer's whereabouts but the elven girl reveals that he had left them to slay some goblins. Meanwhile, the goblin king is seen fleeing for his life but the goblin slayer arrives at that moment and stops him with an intimidating ensemble and helmet that reflects red light. The goblin king thinks of a way to get back to his best and impregnate his female captives, but he is surprised when the goblin slayer tells him that his plan wouldn't work because he had already destroyed his nest and rescued his female captives. The goblin king launches himself at him in rage and the goblin slayer returns his strikes with parries however he gets flung across the forest grounds and the goblin king walks toward him menacingly before stepping stepping on the goblin slayer's head repeatedly. The goblin king removes his sword and attempts to cut off the head of the goblin slayer, but the priestess steps out of the forest at that moment and traps the goblin king before striking him with lightning. The goblin king tumbles forward and the priestess heals the goblin slayer before chiding him for always risking his life in battle. We soon learn that the goblin slayer had purposely lured the goblin king to the forest because he couldn't handle him alone in the open. Meanwhile, the other adventurers are attacked by one of the goblin lords, but a young goblin tries to kill from behind. However, the female partner of the veteran soldier rescues him. The battle ends as they succeed in killing the goblins and the hero who had defeated the demon lord arrives in town. She discusses with her party about how she had recently heard the goblins had attacked their village, but they had been defeated by a man known as the Goblin Slayer. She tells the other members of her party that she has to meet the warrior who killed them and one of them suggests that killing goblins is a task for rookies. However, the hero informs her that goblins are despicable creatures that are hard to kill. The entire town celebrates the death of the goblin and the farm girl welcomes the goblin slayer after he arrives from his battle with the goblin king. Later on, the goblin slayer returns to the guild and he is warmly greeted by the adventurers. He tells the priestess of his plans to become an adventurer and take up more quests and she asks him why he didn't put up a quest earlier. But the goblin slayer tells her that the last time something like that had occurred in his village, the adventurers had refused to help saying goblins were small fry and she tells him that she'd like to ask for a favor. The priestess asks the goblin slayer if he can take off his mask and he pulls off his helmet to reveal a strikingly handsome face. The crowd gathers over to their side to stare at his face as they're surprised that they've never gotten to see his face. The priestess smiles as everyone gathers around them as she realizes that everyone at the guild had always considered him as family and they would surely attend to his request whenever he makes one because they all genuinely cared for him. The young priestess looks up to his face and promises him silently that she'll accompany him in upcoming battles.